everyone namaste i am back here with the module 2 uh, i would be speaking about how do we actually convert a real world data into a digital world so when we look at real world phenomena it is quite complex and the way it has to be represented has to be taken care of with various issues so the, this module is mainly looking at how do we handle the real world data how do we convert it to a digital world data then finally how uh, how the system or a gis uh, or geographic information based system actually looks at this data so that is what we would learn so when i i am looking at this module the previous module was completely an introduction to the uh, subject but this module is basically uh, giving you a flavor of how gis works so this is the second part of the module which actually is giving you a flavor is how to start working with geographic information system so let's look at the concept that would be covered in today's class it would be i would first look at what do you mean by a real world model then look at principles of a real world model wherein i would i would give you an examples of how real world is how and what kind of modeling uh, techniques we have to use then we will look at how do we see the real world information in terms of digital world when i say entities here everything that is in the real world that can be represented in a digital world is nothing but an entity so entity as i said can have huge number of attributes in the previous uh, week we have learned that attributes can be both spatial and non spatial so entities can have huge number of uh, spatial and non spatial attributes we we'll look at this then we will also look at how entities attributes and relationships are built what do you mean by relationship and how each of these uh, specific qualities are uh, then linked so when i get into the real world model for example let let us say that they, this room has several human beings several students who are sitting here so when we look at each and every student they have their own way of thinking own way of analysis of data for building the models if i have to build a model if i have 100 students sitting in this class each of the 100 students will have their own way of putting it forward if i am looking at the urban model economists will have their economic uh, inputs into the model whereas a geographist i have their own way of uh, looking into the model whereas the architect would uh, refer it to in a different way so the thinking the capability, uh, capability and the way the, it is interpreted is very different so when i have to look at any real world phenomena this has to be taken into consideration and this is foremost important when we are looking at real world which means to say that we have to capture every information of every one of these otherwise your model may fail in the context when you are applying it to the real world it may work in your lab but when it when you go out and apply it on the land it may fail to a very large extent so then can gis handle it yes of course gis with a multitude of tools the science that is built behind these tools can handle the collective model of real world thinking when i say collective model it is everyone's thinking can be captured only thing is that user should be able to interpret every detail of that particular model okay and moreover when we are building a model we should start thinking independently than looking at only domain specific we should not remain domain specific but look at more aspects of how everyone perceives that particular model to be represented if let us say we are trying to capture uh, maybe uh, how a particular city is growing so we have to look at the physical aspects we have to look at the economic aspect we have to look at how uh, uh, if there is an industrial area that is coming up how it is actually benefiting in all the aspects and whether physically it can come into that aspect and if it has this kind of structure what kind of structure it actually can have if it has this kind of structure will it, will it affect the environment or uh, through emissions of certain gases so all of these has to be taken into consideration if the real world model has to be built perfectly so that is very important when you are looking at gis is just a tool gis is a system gis is science but the way the data is fed into the system 
that is where it produces output if there is the data itself is junk then it produces an output that is completely garbage so if the data is real good quality data i i would also speak about how the data quality has to be assessed so if it's a good quality data with certain way of collecting the data then gs can give you extremely good results so the real world model can translate as a data model so when you are looking at the digital world it is represented as a data model so each and every aspect is converted as a data and this data model sits in a database okay so this fits into a database and it has relations so now the first thing is you have a real world if you are putting it into the digital world then it converts it as a data model so when i say data model for example if we have 10 rooms in a particular building if you want to represent all the 10 rooms in gis so every room is an entity so please understand this every room is an entity okay so this entity fits in a database with a specific id okay so each id will be linked for example the size of this room the capacity of this room the lighting in this room the audio visual capacity of this room all these are qualitative quantitative data for the spatial non spatial data so these are attribute information for this particular room which has a particular id so this attribute information can be linked to your entity through a relationships that is what i mean by a real world data converting into a, dig a digital world through a data model which fits into a database and has relations so please understand every every data set should have for which is being represented from a real world should always have a data model should look at database relations and each of these things which are trying to represent will be an entity right so when we look at a data model it may be defined as objects in a spatial database plus the relationships among them that is what is called a data model fine so when we are looking at data models we have different kinds of data models which will look at it it's vector data and raster data model vector data model has different kinds of representative models whereas raster data model has its own different types of representations which we'll look at uh, probably at the end of this week or maybe in the next week and we'll also look at how these data models are uh, better than each data model has advantages and disadvantages so we'll look at each of them and how we can uh, try to use these data models for our uh, for this uh, analysis so let us look at it uh, a bit later but uh, please keep in mind we have two types of data models one is vector other one is raster any photograph for example you have you would have taken a photograph zoomed in to the photograph so you will find it as a square number of square boxes with certain color density yes so these square boxes are are nothing but pixels in those images okay pixelated data so when you see that that is nothing but a raster data okay if you are representing a data in a in a form of a point line and a polygon a point line and a polygon for example if i'm uh, trying to map this particular region around a, a building okay around a building there is certain number of trees there is a building and there is a road in front of a building now if i have to represent the trees the road and a building so trees can be captured in a point because these are at one particular location road is entire line segment so it can be captured in a form of a line whereas a building is a polygon it's an area right so we capture it in the form of a polygon so each point number of points can form a line number of line segments form a polygon so this is how a vector data is built okay so you have a vector data you have a raster data so i think uh, all of you understand what are uh, what are different types of data uh, data models that is vector and raster now these are used by different users to correct data and represent extract data and represent as maps reports and statistics so once you have put anything in the database 
you can as i said in my previous lectures you can do any kind of queries any kind of analysis that is possible with that data so it is not that you you can do every kind of analysis but you can do any analysis that is really reasonable and can be represented in the form of a map a report or a statistic i i did give you an example of a statistics and a map so you can use it for any kind of analysis that is that that data can support with so that is where your database and the data model helps so when we look at the flow of a real world so though i'll speak about this in my maybe in the next uh, lecture but i would like to give you some uh, information before because it would give you some understanding of how the real world is translated into an normally an uh, 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 database or an uh, data model so now for example when you look at uh, the real world uh, if you look at here so you have a real world which is based on actual phenomena so if you are looking at a particular building so you have an actual phenomena as a building and it may have certain connections number of students visiting the building number of process in the uh, having their offices in the building or it may be number of recording centers there or it may be uh, number of uh, parking areas that are there so these are certain uh, connections that the real world will have or the number of trees around the building so these are certain connections so now you have to convert it to a data model the first thing that you will do is if you want to represent the entire building so you have the building as a polygon right so then each and every room in this building where maybe professor's office or the students class or students uh, uh, maybe workshop area so all of these will be each of them will be an entity so each of them entity will have a type will have attributes so how many people are how many students are there in that particular lab particular workshop how many people are actually uh, 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 i mean in that entire building so these are the attributes that are there how many come at uh, this specific time how many uh, are uh, coming at the other uh, maybe a bit later so all of these are uh, it, the data that you can enter into as an attribute so each of these attributes are then related as relationships so every attribute talk to each other with relations so when you look at this uh, once the this particular model is built then you have a data representation model so how this data is represented it is represented as a type it can be represented with attributes okay that can be represented with geometry quality relationship so we'll see all of these in my uh, uh, further uh, weeks so how you actually represent each of these data representation models and you have once you have converted it into a model that is as i said two types of model so this model will be stored in a database with has certain data structure so when so data structure also has the same kind of representation of a data uh, data representation model and when you look at uh, once you have a database you can as i said you can do any kind of analysis and representation this should be in the form of a machine code which can be in the form of a symbols which can be in the form of a line which can be in the form of a text once you have any kind of analysis and representation this can be represented in a form of a map it can be represented in form of reports what not so everything that can be a uh, kind of representation can be submitted for any kind of uh, the policy decision making can be done once it, the analysis and representation can be easily performed so this especially the way you build your model where uh, and the data representation model and your database forms the crux of converting a real world data into a digital data so uh, to give an example of how uh, it may look for example the first one here the, there's a image which is actually representing a real world a real world phenomena where you have a lake you have a buildings around the lake you can see there are huge number of buildings that are uh, that have come out in the periphery of the lake this some some part of it maybe uh, some of them are encroached uh, regions here this is a road that is just passing through the uh, lake so this so now when you are actually creating a model you represent this particular road which is here as a line right each of these buildings will become if you see here if you see the cursor 
each of these cursors actually become a polygon and when you see this this lake also is a polygon okay and you have certain points for example here you have certain vegetation here certain vegetation trees here etc so these becomes a points so now this is how your model is represented in a form of a model of a real world or a data model now data representation model is then converted something like this you have for example if you are representing it as a uh, if this is if you are representing as a raster model so when you look at this there is nothing but water body you have certain open spaces here you have complete urban area and you have certain small uh, 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 maybe vegetative region and certain open areas that are there here so this is nothing but a data representation model in a, a raster model in for the real world now then once you have done it you have a database so now conversion of this for example there is a polygon a one one of those polygon is nothing but a gym other polygon is again a gym then you have a certain uh, letters that have been given for maybe a lettering in the in terms of each of this building is given a particular letter okay then we represent it as in the form of a size of a building then operation operating her so the, if this is an uh, uh, maybe an office uh, building so we also represent we have represented as operating her so these are nothing but your database so when you look at this it is these are the entities the shape the polygons here and i have given a name so it's called it is associated with an entity now then these are the object ids which we refer always in order to connect with or represent a particular data then these are the attributes so this is the uh, these are the qualitative informations that are there so these are the attributes so now each of these is represented by a relation relation in terms of size relation in terms of operational hours so that that is about how you have an entity you have a relation and you have a object so or a database so this is how the entire uh, flow of a real world model will be then once you have done it you will analyze only you will, you may crop a certain part of a region analyze it and you can show this this how different maps different uh, representation are there now when we look at this as a real world model so uh, we have to look at how the principles actually work in real world model so uh, when we look at a real world model and has it has to be represented in gis it has to be extremely simplified model otherwise it cannot be easily interpreted in terms of uh, the common user who wants to just get an information about what has been uh, what data has been collected and how it has been represented the union uh, the uniform phenomena can be classified and described in the real world model that is converted as a data model by applying elements of geometry and quality so we look at what is elements of geometry but just for your information it is uh, the real world model is converted to a data model by having elements of geometry so geometry i would speak about how what are different elements of geometry and what is the quality important uh, the very important aspect as i said before is the quality of data if you have a good data so you get a good output if you have a bad data when i say bad data it is not the data quality is bad the way it is collected or the way it is represented is a bad data so having a bad data so will give you a junk output so the data model is then transferred to a database that can handle digital data from which the data can be normally presented so when we are looking at the re uh, real world model you uh, you normally have the real world model that determines the data need to be acquired so when you physically look at the real world you know what are the data needs that are required in order to convert it into a, a data a database or a data model so from when i say a real world model let's say you are looking at a, go a google image and you are uh, trying to mark that you are uh, trying to look at this particular region in the google map I, as i had shown before so you will you will have to get the boundaries of each of the buildings there so that they are represented as entity then attributes of that building how many number of floors are there size of the building etc but you can even calculate it on gis that's not a big problem but uh, number of floors certain attribute data which cannot be calculated uh, has to be uh, 
actually populated into the database. So, once you have populated in uh, as an attribute data into the database, now that is what actually the real needs are. So, it depends on the data user whether you need the height of a building, whether you need the size of the building, whether you need number of floors in a building, the occupants of a building, population of a building. So, it is dependent on the user what kind of information he needs. So, once he looks at the physical information from the earth surface, then he can understand okay, these are the specific aspects that I have to collect. So, once he goes, he can uh, to the field, he can collect all those information and he or she can collect all the information and come back. Once the information is collected, this the information is now represented as an entity. That is what I spoke about when I gave an example of a building and number of uh, rooms in a building. So, always a real world model is represented as an entity. So, now when we look at real world model, it is absolutely not uh, possible to devise it as a phenomena. Okay? So, how it is not uh, uh, divisible as a phenomena of the same kind, I would explain it in my further slides, but for it is quite dynamic, real world data is quite dynamic. So, it is hardly very difficult for us to understand or put it out in the form of a data model. So, that is how your uh, data model has to be quite efficient in handling the real world data. So, when we look at entity entity has type classification, entity has attribute classification, entity has relationships. So, type of entity, the type of attributes that it can have and the relationships between these attributes define your entire database. So, this, this is what everyone has to remember, always entity is dependent on type classification, attributes and relationships. Now, when you are looking at entity for type classification, the concepts of entity types assumes that uniform phenomena can be classified as such and it, it need not be a different phenomena. Some entities may need to be categorized for example, road. When you are looking at a road, road, ca road as a class, road is an entire road is an entity, okay? but road when you are dividing it you need to have a, a whether it is an NH road, whether it is a SH road, ODR, MDR. What, whatever whatever kind of uh, roads these are. So, this is how you actually classify the roads. So, entity is then classified based on this. Each entity must be uniquely defined to prelude amb ambiguity. You cannot have something uh, that is NH, uh, NH1 and NH1A. So, that, that kind of I am just giving you an example, but that kind of uh, un, uh, ambiguity should not be there. Whereas, if it is NH1, NH2, NH3, it is very well taken because it is easier to uh, easier for your database to understand these are different uh, in, uh, representation of the same uh, entity or say, uh, classes of representation of the same entity. So, for example, if you have an house that must be defined in such a way that it is either a detached house at number 1 UNESCO mark is classified under house not under industrial building. If for example, there is uh, 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 um, let us say uh, we are looking at an academic campus. So, there is a house uh, of a faculty that is there in the academic campus. So, when you are representing this house, this has to be under house not under industrial building. Okay? So, and it is an detached house at number 1 UNESCO mark that is the way you have to represent. If you just say a detached house and you do not give a reference to that it is an it is not a house under industrial building, then you are going to mess up the entire database. So, it would give wrong results for different kinds of analysis. So, it has to be completely classified properly. Then when we look at geographical data, a geographical data and entry might be along the unique category of that particular area or it can be a dependent category. So, when we are looking at the entity type is also no, uh, can be a nominal scale or a qualitative data. So, you can have a nominal data and a qualitative data. So, but geographical data can be divided based uh, can, see there is a difference. So, now what I am speaking is about attributes and the, uh, and the entity. So, now when you are looking at the entity types, entity types can be only nominal and qualitative. Whereas, when you have a geographical uh, information along with the entity, then it becomes a geometric data or an attribute data. So, you show you can have two types of data 
uh, attached to an entity which is geometric data and attribute data. So, that is how an entire data, way, data model is defined. Then attribute data can have a qualitative data and a quantitative data. So, when we look at this um, entire scape, you have an entity, you have uh, entity it can be represented, uh, entity can be represented in two types of data, uh, data or can be connected to two types of values or classes, it can be geometric data and attribute data. So, then attribute data can have both qualitative and the quantitative data as per the requirement. Okay. So, when we look at the uh, attributes, attributes for example, when I have considered here is you have a, a particular uh, a remotely sensed image, this is of, uh, of certain number of lakes. So, when you look at it, uh, this attribute data can have all uh, qualitative and quantitative data. For example, here the attribute is altitude, lake area, maximum depth, the, the fish if it is present or not, whether uh, what is the volume of a area, the basin of a uh, basin area in hectares. So, all of these are quantitative whereas, these are qualitative data. So, both of this can be represented that. So, each of this attribute is then linked to an entity, entity would have an ID based on all of these the uh, data can be easily extracted whenever necessary. So, when we are looking at attributes, attributes as I said can have a quantitative data. So, it is based on kind of uh, accuracy that you need, you have a nominal, ordinal or uh, interval and ratio scale. The way, uh, the way the attribute scale is represented is something like this. For example, uh, most of you know what do you mean by nominal scale. So, uh, similarly, we have an ordinal scale where you rank the order of uh, your students or whatever or, or the data. Then you have an interval scale where you represent intervals and you have a ratio scale where you are representing a ratio. For example, the marks, how much marks out of 1000 uh, that person uh, that uh, student has scored in a particular semester or interval scale I can define it in the form of a CGPA, what is a CGPA of a student on what scale. Okay? So, the, this is how you can represent an attributes. Okay? So, this is how an entity is linked to attributes in a form of a scale. Now, when we are looking at attributes again, so when when you are look uh, when I did uh, speak about the previous scale, so this is how the attributes can be represented from a nominal to the ratio scale. So the first uh, level of accuracy that we can see is a nominal scale, whereas the ratio uh, is the best uh, kind of accuracy that you can always receive when you have a scale that is better. Okay, so. Uh, that is what I have explained in this particular uh, slide, wherein it is uh, wherein it, it is uh, I have given examples of how the ordinal scale, how interval scale and the ratio scale works and how an entity can be represented uh, or in the form of uh, attributes and disconnected. Now, as I said relations, so for example, if I have a building here, so number of pipes that are actually connected to that building and then it has a certain number of pipes that is connecting to the main sewerage. So, that uh, is saying a property of that particular building that is the relationship where a pipe belongs to. So, that is a relationship. So, this belongs to is a relationship or it pertains to is a relationship. Then you have comp uh, if you are looking at a country, it comprises of states, number of states that this particular country has, uh, the population the state. So, that comprising is again a relationship. Okay. So, how do you really, really represent this relationship? We will look at it, but as of now relationships are those which are representing those date attribute data and are connecting and giving a meaningful information. So, that is what you mean by an entity relationship. So, in, in, in a summary of uh, if to summarize, we have looked at real world model translating into a data model. So, you have a real world, you have a data world, uh, in between that you have a data model. Okay, the, uh, the way it is represented in the data model then converted into a database, any query on this database to analyze and represent it uh, as a real as uh, can be represented in a form of a maps or graphs or uh, any kind of statistical analysis. So, I have also spoken about what is the flow from a real world to the data, how the data model is being built 
then you have entities in the real world model that is type classification attributes and relationships so what are different type classification different attributes different relationships in a particular model now you have a geographical data when i say geographical data always has geometric data plus an attribute data so when i am representing it and in a data model entity is will comprise of me not always but will have geometric data plus attribute data when it is actually representing the real world okay in a normal database the entity will always be connected to an attribute data but when you are looking at a spatial part of it it is always connected with the geometric value plus the attribute data then you have attribute scale of measurement so you have nominal scale ordinal scale interval and a ratio so when you look at this all of these scales so it is the way you have uh, you represent your data so accuracy of this data depends on the scale entity relationships actually uh, if i have to say for example you are connecting a particular attribute to the uh, to the other to finally to the entity so you say it belongs to it comprises of it locates so all of these are relations okay in uh, for ex uh, for example if you are trying to put out an uh, area of a building so it says uh, this area of a building is uh, belongs to this particular entity so that is nothing but your relations okay so it is finally con connected to that then uh, in the next class we will look at how we can explore different data model how it works except and we will also look at each of these data models in a more holistic way thank you very much uh, let's meet in the next class